So, if you don't know who we are, <laughs> this is Tanya. <laughs> I am Hi, everyone. Elsa with Virtual <laughs> Kisses. This is our positivity page. And um, today's topic, as you can see down below in the ticker tape, it says, put your love glasses on yes. with Virtual Kisses. And so, um, yes, just like Tanya's got on right now. <laughs> <laughs> put them on, guys. We're about to start. <laughs> yes, put them on before you watch this. So, <laughs> so this is what we are. We're all about like the love and the good vibes, like what she's wearing. This is kind of our message today. Um, and, you know, we just want to talk about what does that look like? Because uh, for every single person, I guess it depends on your experiences and your background and your history. Um, you know, what are love glasses and what does that mean to you and uh, how is it that you put it on in your life, your perspective and your take? And so I'm going to start off with Tanya and I feel that she's going to share some keys that hopefully you guys out there out in Facebook land and wherever else you're watching this from um, will be able to put these love glasses on yourself and hopefully see the world in a whole new light too. So you can start first, Tanya. Well, thank you, Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, again, uh, Elsa was saying, what are love glasses? Well, it's um, something that we like to walk in every day, and um, what we see through our, our what we see through our eyes. Um, lately, if you guys haven't noticed, I've been I've been seeing a lot of posts on, um, you know, just a, a lot of racism and whatnot. But um, we're here to share with you how, you know, how it could be, how, could, how can we look at it differently, right? So um, I just got a short story to share, and then um, I'll lead into what, um, how I look at the world differently through my love glasses. So um, yesterday I was um, just going to, uh, I was going to the dump. Um, to drop off some garbage and stuff like that and uh, I and my daughter were taking a, a good drive there and um, um, there was this lady who pulled uh, pulled up to give my numbers because you need a number access code to get into the dump so I gave her my number access code and she said hey if it's okay if you can throw the garbage on the left side of the bin so that um, there's a baby squirrel in there and um, don't want them really squished. I'm like, aw, a baby squirrel. So I pulled up to the dump to uh, throw out the garbage and I looked in and it was so tiny, so uh, innocent. So uh, it's at the bottom of the bin and she put these sticks in there so it would climb out so it wouldn't get hurt. So as people were driving up and um, are aware of it, I, I noticed even for myself, um, just the way I saw it was, it's so innocent, so cute, so little, um, you don't want to harm it. So when, when I see that through my eyes, uh, I see, it's like that with me, with the world, you know, um, I see every individual um, as, you know, innocent normal you know um there is no difference between colors or races so it's just like me seeing that baby squirrel he's innocent and um just normal <laughs> right and you don't want to do anything to harm it um i'll give another story of how i work this in my life uh, when I was uh, working years ago, at, um, my first job was at McDonald's. So an incident happened there where um, someone uh, there didn't see me that way. And I, I was like oblivious, like could not understand why um, this person was just so, uh, do this, do that. Like, trying to get me to do a lot of things but I didn't really understand until uh, actually a few days days ago I was asking through my faith through God uh, why why was that because he was bringing this up and I was wondering well, why was that and then I realized it what was the problem and the fact that I didn't see it that way my lens was different I thought like I thought you know that person was like the baby squirrel normal um, innocent and just people you know, and how I dealt with it was I just didn't allow that to penetrate my heart. I just 
went along the day and did what I needed to do. I was a really good hard worker and I just loved just seeing them as um, who they were, just someone who didn't understand and didn't know. Um, just like baby, um, on the way back, going back to my first story, on the way back from our drive, I, I my daughter, I felt God was sharing us um, again and just quoting over us or to me again that um, innocence is a good thing to have your eyes looking out at the world because they do not know. All right. And what they do not know, they're usually afraid of or don't understand. So uh, I saw three more baby um, crows or um, I don't know, they're little blackbirds. They're so cute. They're so <laughs> tiny. And they're sitting on the side of the road. Like every few miles we drove, we saw babies, right? So I felt God was saying innocence is a good thing to look through. So when you put your love glasses on like that, that's what I see is love and um, innocence and that people are growing. And when they when they don't understand something, it, it's fine. As long as it doesn't um, penetrate your heart and you can um, just understand where, um, try to understand where they're at in, in the moment, right? And give yourself some grace and just love yourself, right? There's one scripture that I've always looked at is um, God would say, love, love the Lord your God with all your heart and then love your neighbor as yourself. So if I love my neighbors as I love myself, which when I see myself, I think I'm awesome. I'm, I'm just the way God sees me. So more that I see him, the way he sees me, the more I can see my neighbors. And like I said, it's always going to be on my, my glasses are always going to be on and what his lenses are for the world. So I adopt that, um, when I was working, um, even though I didn't understand it, like I said, I was oblivious to it. I didn't understand it, but I just kept that integrity just to see people as um, innocent and uh, like we don't know very much. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that was that's my story. That's my um, prophetic sign, or I shouldn't say prophetic sign, but like a, a love talk from God to continue to walk in. So that's my encouragement to you guys. So if you have any stories that you'd like to share too about wearing love glasses for the world, please write them below and uh, we'd love to hear your stories. So on to you, Elsa. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say hi to Lisa there. She loves our hoodies. Hi, Lisa. She wants to get her hoodies. <laughs> so we actually bought these from Ardennes. If you're wondering where these came from, hers and mine both came from Ardennes. Um, they're actually uh, hoodie dresses. They they're yeah, like, they're really long. They're full long. Well, not <laughs> long to your ankles, but they're kind of like to your knees. And they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hoodie ankle or hoodie uh, knee things. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for sharing about that. Um, yeah, that was kind of neat. Like whenever we were kind of praying about, you know, what to talk about on this segment, you know, because we don't like we know we're, we're totally aware of what's happening in the world today and all the, you know, the, the distraughtness and the racism and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and if we've got voices, we want to lend our voices to maybe more solutions and keys and how to deal with it instead of um, announcing more and more and more of it. So it's kind of like, to me, it's like, um, you know, um, when, let's say like my husband, like when he was struggling with cancer, I remember there was a season where he, all he would do was research cancer and talk about cancer and anti, anti-cancer. It was also, everything was anti-cancer and against cancer. And it was just like, I'm like, yeah, but the focus is still cancer. You know what I mean? Like, a, a, like I think that's all, it's, does your mind's focused on it? Your speech is focused on it? Your actions are focused on it? And it's perpetuating it more and more and more. Um, it starts to even go into all your conversations and all this. And the, and the focus is we didn't want more cancer. Like we wanted more life. We wanted more health. And that's like, I believe that's what we should have been more researching was maybe more like be more pro health and pro life and pro whatever. Right. So um, so with this, we want to be more pro love. All right. If we're seeing like, hey, 
And one of my posts, I've said, you know, hate is a virus. And this is before all this had happened. Um, hate is a virus. And so we want to bring like the, the cure to it, which is more love. And what does love look like? And um, so Tanya shared about what love looks like for her. Um, I'm going to share now for myself what love looks like. And literally, like all I got today was um, is a scripture because I'm a Christian. So um, there's a scripture I screenshot and I'm going to open it up so I can read it because I don't want to paraphrase. <laughs> love scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So so, okay, so it's Colossians 3, 12 to 14, if you guys are looking this up. Um, so this is, I'm going to read it kind of out of order. So what it says, it says, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love and which binds them all together in perfect unity. I want to go back to verse 12, because verse 12, I believe, gives you the, the keys on what that looks like. And so he says there, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves, which is what we've done today. You've clothed ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And so, you know, I think these are like fruits that will lead to produce acts of love and acts of kindness and everything in people's lives is that we have to choose to put on love. You know, it's funny how it doesn't say... Um, you know, like release love from like your innermost being or whatever. <laughs> it, it says put it on. So it's like you've got to, it's a choice. It's a choice just like it was a choice today for us to choose these outfits to put it on. It was a mental choice. Um, I think it's a mental choice that we need to make to actually put on love and whatever love looks like to each one of us. Um, and for myself, like uh, there's a story I want to share as well. And um, it was a story that my mother-in-law had just shared with me recently. Uh, so yeah, so anyways, I'm going to share this story about uh, what my mother-in-law had shared about my niece. And so my niece, she's got a little a little kitten. Well, now it's not a kitten. It's a little bit more grown. Um, and she just said to me recently, she I called her on her birthday recently. And so we had this little story. She's like, you know the backstory about um, Yana's little kitten? And I was like, actually, no. I just, I know that... Uh, yeah, she's got pictures on her Instagram of this kitten and everything, but I, I don't really know the backstory behind it. And she's like, well, she went to, um, they went to go pick up this kitten. And it, it, like, there's a ton of kittens there and everything. Uh, this one kitten was the only kitten that was like not getting picked. And uh, even the owners were saying like, oh, we're going to have to probably, you know, take it over, I don't know, SPCA or something like that. Because all the time it was getting looked over, right? And um, it was... Her kitten is solid black. Like I grew up, my favorite cat was solid black, you know, like a panther. I love panthers. And this kitten is solid black. And I was just like, oh, and so she went and she was just like, well, that's the one I want. That's the one that needs the love. That's the one that I want to go pull my love out on. And she went and adopted this little kitten, right? And to me, you know, Kiana was wearing those eye, the glasses of love, right? Um, you know, these ones. Yes, those those glasses, those glasses. <laughs> and I do want to bring up a point. So, like, um, I was on my friend's Instagram uh, or Facebook. I can't remember which one it was. My friend Tanya, and she had posted this post, and it was. That's such a good point. And I, I want to say it on here. But, you know, um, when they're saying Black Lives Matter and, you know, we're saying, well, but all lives matter, right? And, of course, we believe all lives matter. Yes. Um, and so then, you know, this cartoon talks about this guy's got a sign that says Black Lives Matter. And another guy comes up. He's like, but all lives matter. And and then the one with the Black uh, Lives Matter sign says, yes, but, of course, all lives matter. Just like all forests matter. But right now, the rainforest is what needs our focus and attention on. So you know, we're saying save the rainforest, right? Well, right now there's a people group that needs our focus and attention right now and it's the black lives. So it's not it's not to say that all lives don't matter, you know, uh, because that comes from like a lack kind of mentality, like, oh no, if we give them our focus and our compassion and our kindness and our, you know, a f like more freedom into the, uh, like freedom speech or agreement or whatever, we'll have nothing left over for the other races. Well, no, I think that love never fails and that, you know, we've, there's enough love to go around on the earth, a love, enough kindness to go around. Um, so, yeah. So, like, you know, with that, yes, all lives matter. But right now the, the focus is Black Lives Matter. And so, you know, I just 
I just like that little story about Anna, about how she went and she focused on the one that was lacking the love the most and the one that was being pushed to the corner and neglected and looked over. And so for myself, that's, I've, I've kind of been drawn to that type of an action. That's kind of like what I've done. Like I've kind of shared that a little bit in past videos, but growing up as a child, that's what I would do in a town. I would, I was attracted to people that were like the outed people like the people that didn't fit into crowds or didn't fit into groups and um they were kind of more like the loners or the stoners or whatever right like but because I know they they needed love they needed compassion they needed support they needed you know camaraderie I wanted to come alongside those people um and walk alongside them so for me I would say that that's the way I have put on my love glasses and maybe more compassion like uh when I read that scripture there I think it's compassion that I try to focus more on, um, you know, what it's like to be in their footsteps and, you know, just to try to take a little taste test of it and walk alongside with them um, to help them out of it and everything. And so just like those baby squirrels, right? like they, they need help. Um, they can't just be left totally on their own. Like they still need help and, and uh, you know, and adults to like walk alongside and walk them out of that. And right now I think that this whole um, situation, it's an, it's a baby situation, although it's been going on for so many years. Um, right now it's in baby stage. Finally, it's getting attention, right? Um, it's getting a focus and uh, it just needs more of us to walk alongside with love with good vibes, not negative, hatred vibes and all that, but good positive vibes. And um, yeah, so I'd say like that's my take on it. It was all based on that scripture of Colossians 3, 12 to 14. So um, I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else I had to add. I will pass it back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Elsa. <laughs> well, um, I love that, that little story. It does um, clear up, guys, that um, love is the key, you know, um, and seeing for myself, uh, seeing uh, people as growing in areas, finding, um, you know, uh, what's familiar. You got to know there's a little bit of fear there. There's, you know, and just knowing that um, not everybody's going to right at this moment uh, get it or, or understand it, but to work towards love, to work towards um, seeing them as innocent, you know, or as um, just learning, they're learning, you know, yeah. every every time a child um, is born, they are learning something new, they're learning how to talk, they're learning how to walk, they're learning how to um, see the world around them, um, there's, there's sometimes there's, there's fear, they'll hang on to their parents because they don't understand something, so, but to you know, um, just for yourself, um, bring a difference would be way better. It will do a difference in the world, right? Hmm. So, I don't know. That is my uh, extra two bits on in it. <laughs> so, guys, um, whoever's on, uh, please give us something that um, maybe you went through and how you dealt with it. And um, yeah, and if you haven't, how? If you haven't gone through something like that, how do you, um, like, even if you're not part of that, um, how did you do it? Like, how did you uh, respond to different cultures and how did you look at it? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, Elsa. <laughs> well yeah so thanks the guys for taking time out of your sunday and just watching us and um even finding us again after my whole fumble with the original broadcast so <laughs> and uh, hopefully you will like just post some things down there about what your love glasses look like and and uh you know this is a time that we do need to wear them and choose to wear them like we said we have to choose to put on love so yeah. from our household to yours virtual kisses Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Welcome back to Virtual Kisses. This is Tanya. And Hi, hey, everybody. Hi. Hopefully, you're going to catch us on this feed because I accidentally shut down the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to have to go back to sharing the original way and hopefully you guys will see this on our profiles um recently um sorry i lost my facebook so i'm trying <laughs>
I'm like trying to open it back up when I was trying to go onto that scripture. Ugh, now I lost. Oh well. I will uh, watch from here. I have no clue who's on. So whoever's on, you will have to say hi because I cannot watch from my phone anymore. <laughs> I love